Oh my goodness, how is everybody doing today? <sighs> Anything new and exciting happening in your life this week, folks? Are you working hard? Or as the classic line likes to say, are you hardly working? You know, isn't that a great question? I love that line, are you working hard or are you hardly working? Because what I've learned with age, not that I'm old, let's be clear on that, I am not old, I am spry, yeah, let's go with that. What I've learned with age is that I look at people around me who are successful and I see, I see kind of two camps of people. I see the one camp where they just work their butts off. They are nonstop, nonstop, go, 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 go. And then I see the other camp where they, they seem to spend half the day on the beach or reading or walking or hiking, and yet they're hitting massive numbers. And for me, I find that second camp annoying as hell. And I think the reason I find it so annoying is because it's either like they've stumbled onto this magic fountain of knowledge or opportunity where it, the money just comes to them and they don't have to work for it. Um, or... I'm doing something wrong because I'm in the first camp. I work nonstop. In fact, I was on a call this morning uh, with a partner and they made a comment to me that I seem to be getting on a regular basis anymore, which it probably it, it's meant as a compliment, but it's probably, it's probably a warning sign. And the, the, what I, what I hear is like, dude, I don't know how you do it. Like you're on social media nonstop, you're making content nonstop, like you're everywhere. I see your name, Kurt Blanche. Like, how do you do that plus be the CMO at Vanilla Soft? Like, how do you do all that? Like, holy smokes, you're everywhere. I can't do what you're doing. I would find that exhausting. And you talk all the time, talking nonstop, that's gonna be, like, I'm an introvert. When I talk nonstop afterwards, I just wanna collapse. And yeah, I know you're doing this multiple productions a day. Woo, you're everywhere. You're working hard. As opposed to hardly working, Daryl. And, uh, and there's a lot of truth in that. But I got to be candid with you. I'm actually really, really jealous of those people who do not perhaps put the same amount of activity in that I do and get far better results. And I covet their success. I want to know what they're doing. And I see this as a recurring theme, whether it's in marketing or sales, you know, marketers, we got to send more emails, we got to do more webinars, we got to be on social media more, we got to have more followers, we got to have a bigger list. We need more, we need more, we need more. I see it on sales. You only did, you only did 50 calls today, I need you to do 70 calls today, 90 calls today, 100 calls today, 200 calls today, that's what you need to do. Then you'll hit your numbers. It's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. You ever fall into that trap? It's a numbers game where you, you just think of, I just did more. I got up earlier. I see this all the time. I finally have learned to get up at three in the morning and now I can meditate and I can do my workout and I can be, you know, at my desk at five o'clock. So I'm calling Europe and then, you know, by nine in the morning, I call the East Coast and I can work and I can do the West Coast. You know, and then I can, you know, keep on going. I can do Asia and I can work super long hours. And I, I managed to get it all in and I have no life. And I've gotten fat because I don't get any chance to get away from this phone and this desk. And there you go. I see it both. And I see camps on both sides. So what's the right answer? Where do you go from here? I have this conversation all the time with, with us, our, you know, my colleagues here at Vanilla Soft. You know, they're saying, Daryl, we need more leads. And I'm saying, well, do you need more leads or do you need better quality leads? What if I gave you fewer leads, but more quality? Wouldn't that be better? Huh? Now you could actually really invest time in a whole account base, you know, selling and marketing tactic. You have time to research it and really get to know your people and, and navigate the accounts as opposed to just, you know, hammering the phone and the email and social media touches. Quantity versus quality. And it's an age old thing. And we all seem to fall back on quantity, right? When it's not going our way, we need to do more. I am wired that way. <sighs> I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to get up earlier. Sorry, honey, can't go for that walk with you. Sorry, kids can't play with you because I got to get up early in the morning because I got to go and need to do more. It's not scalable. Are you sitting, listening to this? Am I, am I hitting some inner guilt feelings, a complex that you may be suffering because you're like, yeah, damn it, Daryl. 
that's my life. That's where I'm at. And I think if I just do more, then I'm going to get that shiny object that I'm striving for. And then I can provide better for my family or I can buy myself that, that cool trinket I really want or I can save for my retirement. <sighs> See, here's the thing. What you need to know, it's, it's whether it's work smarter, not harder, it's quantity, not quality. Do I track activities or do I not track activities? I've heard these people say it over and over again. Daryl, when it comes to code calling, it's just a numbers game. So you wrap this all up and I said, I need to speak on this. Who, who, who is the right person that I can speak to? And that's when I recognize that Amazon's best-selling author, David Walter. If you don't know David, he's the best-selling author of The Million Dollar Rebuttal. He is out there on his book where he explicitly says, cold calling is not a numbers game. So that, my friends, is why I bring to you right now my good friend, David Walter. David, welcome to the show. How are you doing, sir? Fantastic. With an introduction like that, I got to hire you all the time to go around. <laughs> just me everywhere. <laughs> you got, you nailed I the love issue. It. You, got up. you got the emotion. That's the key. You got, you hit the nerve of the emotion and that's when people listen. It it's raw. It's real. Like, you know, I know this, I live this, my wife frets and worries about me and the activity I keep. My doctor worries about me. And yet I know I'm still held accountable. And if I don't do the right activities, I don't get retained as an employee, which is going to affect my ability to provide for my family. So I have this circular logic. And when I saw the title of your book, cold calling is not a numbers game. Uh, I, I'm like, damn it, I got to get David on the show. So I have to ask you, and for those who don't know, for those who don't know, okay, David ran a call center for 13 years. When he was doing that, he was doing like 15 appointments per day. So he understands the whole idea. I mean, I think about a call center, he gets activity. He understands how to set appointments. So everything he's done here is based on his own experience. So, but I have to ask you, David, um, what was your catalyst for writing this book? Well, it's, it's interesting because I'd wanted to be an author all my life. And um, basically, you have to be an expert at something. And when I, when I, what got me into running my own call center was working at a company that I detailed in the book, CSI, where I did set 15 appointments every day for six months, setting over 1,800 appointments when everyone else in the company in the call center set two appointments a day. The catalyst for me doing that was I helped my dad make a million dollars in the HVAC business. And then he went bankrupt when we hit the 90s recession. I had to go find a job. I found this job and I, I was going to try to make enough money to get my buy a land for my parents to get a house. You know, they were living with me. That was my motivation for for actually setting 15 appointments a day. The motivation for writing the book was I realized when I walked away from that job and I started my call center, um, I didn't realize what I had done. I had actually revolutionized the concept of cold calling and I didn't realize it. Um, and then all the while I ran my cold calling center, lots of people didn't want to pay my price. It was like $10,000 a month for to have my team cold call for them. And they would try to get my secrets and I would just hold them close to my vest. And I realized when I decided that I want to write a book, that I wanted to be an author, um, that was something that was a game changer that I didn't realize way 30 years ago that I'd done. If I had realized 30 years ago what I'd done, I would have written this book 30 years ago. So it's a game changer even today. And that's why I put that, you know, I put that cold calling is not a numbers game on my book is because even till this day, 30 years forward, most people still think cold calling is a numbers game. And that's what resonated with people most. In fact, that title when I put it on some ads on different things is what drove it to become a number one bestseller. This is probably the biggest, if I look over the course of my career and I've been both a head of sales and a head of marketing multiple times, I saw, I have been on both sides of the fence. And if I look at my career, when I was a sales guy, I would always say to marketing, you're not giving me enough leads. And I was a marketing guy. I'd always say, what do you mean you need more leads? What is wrong with the leads I'm giving you now? The, the topic on it being a numbers game or not being a numbers game is, I think, foundational to the struggle between sales and marketing being aligned and towards sales being successful. So now, 
since you wrote it, so you, I, and I find it so interesting that you said, you know, they would, my clients would want to know my secrets and I'd hold it close to my vest. But then you turned around and you wrote this wonderful book that said, okay, I'm not going to hold it close to my vest anymore. So I, let's just tackle that right away. What changed? Why did you go from, I'm not going to give you my secrets to, I'm going to put it out there in print and for the whole world to see? The reason why is because when I ran my call center, I realized after running it, it I read a, a passage from the seven habits of highly effective people. And he said, have you found yourself at the top of your ladder leaned against the wrong building? And I realized that the call center that I ran while I was successful, wasn't really having the impact that I wanted. And, and I changed careers, but what I wanted to do is I realized that companies should do their own cold calling and salespeople should be the ones to do the cold calling, not the people I hire. Because when you when I go out and hire people, it's you're dealing with the bottom of the barrel people that want to cold call, uh, you know, for you know seventy dollars an hour. Uh, they're not the highest quality people. They're not the smartest people necessarily, um, and that that's a problem. And then there's no job. I don't you know hierarchy. There's no movement. That's it. It's a manager, me. Uh, now I have other few other positions, but it's it's a dead end job basically. Whereas salespeople can use it. They can a company that is as a sales organization but as many departments can bring in people and pay them less to be pre-sales and then move them up into sales and management, all these other things. So you can actually attract better quality candidates. Uh, and it's cold calling requires a salesman. You're going to talk to a CEO, a controller and persuade them to set an appointment. That's almost harder than actual selling, believe it or not. And I've done, like you said, I've, I've done both. I've done sales. I've done setting appointments. That's harder. And it requires more sales skills, believe it or not, to do that. And that's why I wanted to basically give this out to people so they could stop hiring cold calling companies and try to do it internally and have salespeople do it. So that is, that is I love that story. I love it because I, what I love about it, and this is what I love about the sales community. This is the same reason we do this podcast as an example. And we do so much content at Vanilla Soft is because we want to share with the tribe. We want to share what we've learned. And I mean, I mean, I'll be the first one to tell you, for all those who are listening, there is many pers people we have on our shows, and I listen to a nugget or a piece of advice or a tactic or a strategy, and I go, damn, you know, we're supposed to be the experts here, and we're not doing that. And then I turn around, and I go, and I, and I implement it, and I see great things at the company. And I'm like, wow. And, you know, I didn't pay anything for that. It was just what we do as a tribe. And uh, so that's, you know, David, I feel like I'm a kindred spirit of yours. Okay, we're going to do, let's do this. We're going to get into it, folks. Like we're hard and fast. He's going to talk to us everything about what he, what it means, what the secret sauce is. In the end, we're going to give you actual recommendations on how you can apply it to your calling tactics. So we're going to actually, he's going to share this with you. We're going to go on a commercial break. You have one of two options you can do. One is you can sit back and listen to it. Or two, you can go to Amazon and check out his book and put it in your cart and you can buy it. So there you go. We'll be right back. All right, let's get into it. Uh, I know you, I don't want to give away anything. So I'm going to kind of set the stage. I'm going to prompt you and then you just run with the ball. So here we go. I know you like to draw an analogy to the movie Pursuit of Happiness. I'm just going to stop and I'm going to pass the ball over to you. All right. Well, um, in the Pursuit of Happiness, I hope everybody in the audience has seen that. If you haven't, go watch it immediately. One of the most impactful movies I've ever seen. Uh, about drive and determination uh, and, and un, unsurmountable obstacles. But anyway, there's a clip on YouTube. And if you put in the cold calling, Pursuit of Happiness, you'll find it on YouTube. And what it does, it details Will Smith, the character he's playing, uh, that actually went through all that. He's trying to become a broker and he's not being paid. He comes in late because his child, he has to take over the season only. He's running, he's in charge of his son, his, the mother's gone. Um, but anyway, so he just he he describes how he comes in late, and because of that, he can't he can't get to the top of the list. They have lists uh, in that brokerage firm, and they go from the bottom to the top, each name. And I'll get into that in a minute. 
but uh, he can't get to the top. And he, he still, he doesn't drink water, doesn't go to the bathroom, all this stuff. He still can't get to the top of the list. Um, and he needs to get to the top. And so what you see, the pivotal moment that I want you to focus on when you watch that video is right when he wraps that speech up, he's looking at his list and he sees he's called these companies and he starts eyeing the top of the list. Oh, if I could only be at the top of the list. And he just, he starts moving his pen, skipping over leads, skipping over leads, goes to the top, Walter Ribbon, the top lead, he circles it, he calls, he gets Walter in, he has an appointment with Walter. And a fa of course, Walter is a no sell, but being persistent, he actually goes to his house one day and gets invited to go to a game. And at the game, he networks with all these people that ended up buying and buy from him and he becomes, he wins. Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> he becomes a broker. But uh, what we glean from that is that he was random. He stopped doing consecutive call. He was consecutively calling and went to a random move. And that's really what is the numbers game. The numbers game is, there's lots of ways where things are a numbers game. So just to cut this out and make it very clear, when you're calling, when people say it's a numbers game, they're talking about whether you have a CRM of 100 leads load in there or you have a list of 100 names that you have to call all 100. What they do is they call consecutively and they go through their list and call everybody in the list. And they try to make hundreds of calls a day. That is the numbers game. Why it's wrong and why it's almost an insane idea is because it doesn't grasp the concept of what you learn in that, in, in that movie is that random you see if you if you could visualize your list and you and by each each list would be a marker color that would change from yellow green red green being great time to call the guys there waiting as you call and you go through from the bottom to the top it's red 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 they're not in not in not in once you pass and you, you get on like the 10th 11th 12th lead the first and second lead actually start showing green in other words, what I'm saying is when you're calling and they say the, the, the person's on the phone, they're in a conference call, they're at the bank, they're at the office, that they're telling you the truth. These people are moving around, they're dynamic. And if I just make one call to that person, likely I'll miss that contact. And so what the, what the numbers game concept is, is that you're going to miss most of the people just by making one pass and one call to 100 companies when you need, need to make multiple calls to that company. Um, what I what I often say is that if I if I if you gave an assistant or someone else not a cold caller a task and said I need you to go make contact with somebody important a vendor of ours uh, my lawyer uh, someone important or my you know somebody important like that in charge of a large organization you wouldn't imagine Daryl that they would just make one call pick up the phone and say yeah Daryl wants to meet with you so and so no most likely they would have to make several calls email text to get in contact with that person. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And so same thing. So what we're doing is we're setting the wrong goal for people. We're saying, go make hundreds of calls a day. What is a call going to get you? Nothing. The name of the game is contacts, baby, contacts. I want to know, when, when I had my call center, I want to know, don't tell me how many calls you made, how many contacts did you make, right? A contact is the only thing that can lead to an appointment and a sell and a pipeline. And so what we should be telling prospects, I mean, our employees, salespeople, SDRs, BDRs, is go make contact. How many contacts did you make today? Not how many calls. Another example. And I've had this, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I've had this conversation many times where I'll say to people, I think that the, the numbers game is wrong because it, it shouldn't be about the number of calls you made. I'll, I'll use the word, how many conversations did you have today? Because that's really what I care about. But I mean, am I saying the same thing as what you're saying? Yeah, a contact would be with the decision maker. And you had you, you talked Correct. to them. Daryl, how's it going? Okay. My name is David. I'm with Million Dollar Rebuttal. You know, that, that was a contact. Now it could it could end there, or it could become a long talk, or it could become an appointment. But still, that's your pool of possibilities. Okay, so if cold calling is not a numbers game, as you're saying, it's it's a, and that's why it's wrong. The example you gave them, it's more about how many contacts, make conversations you have with actual decision makers. Then, give me, tell me what I'm doing wrong in my current approach, or said another yeah. way. 
how do I, you know, I'm sure every person listening right now says, well, obviously I want to have those conversations. That's why I'm doing this. So what am I doing wrong or what do I need to do to have those conversations with those contacts? Oh, well, correct. But just to give them confidence, when I said 15 appointments a day, the only way that was possible is I started making 40 contacts a day, 40 contacts a day. And I did that by applying this principle. And that's so it's you have to do that. It's absolutely you have to dramatically if you're going to set more appointments, you can only do that by dramatically increasing the number of contacts you have. And so to get to answer your question, the way you do it is counterintuitive. The reason why people aren't doing it the, the way that I prescribe is because they're afraid of burning the lead. Basically, you have to call more times. It's that simple to call more times. Um, in, the, in the Steve Jobs movie, uh, when Mark Markula shows up there and he says, uh, yes, you called my this other gentleman. He says, if you listen, he says, you called him 150 times. <laughs> now, I'm not advocating that you call somebody 150 times, but the point is you have to dramatically increase the number from one only to multiple. And I specifically prescribe to call three times a day for up one lead. You need to call like in the morning, in the afternoon, and you, you call that three different times for three days. Uh, three to four days. Now, why won't you? Why do I say you won't burn that lead? If you do what most people do is they call and make this glorious announcement. My name, my company, and the first and last name of the person I'm trying to get a hold of, which is another topic. It all screams salesmen. It creates gatekeepers. I remember back to when I was a distributor taking calls for security products, and I remember vendors would call in, all these different types of people call in and be like, hey, is Steve around? Can you try his line for me? Uh, call for, for Bob. These are simple things. That's how you're supposed to call. This is Dave. I'm calling for Daryl. Is Daryl in today? Uh, I'm calling. Is Daryl? Daryl's probably gone for the day. You know, that, that kind of thing. They don't even know what company I'm calling from. That's the whole idea is you can call like that in that way multiple times and not get caught. They don't, they, they're not going to remember how many Bob's called him that day, right? Probably five. They're not going to remember. What happens is if you keep calling past three to four days, they start to remember your voice and they start to out you and then they'll remember you and it'll be burned. Don't call anymore. The other thing you do is you don't leave voicemails every time you call. You'll agree with me, Daryl. If I call and left a voicemail for you, it would be my, I would have to stop calling until it give you time to listen to that voicemail and call me back. If I call the next day with another voicemail and the next day with another voicemail, you would get irritated, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Big way. Yeah. 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 So if you don't do that, right, if you don't leave voicemails and you don't make a big production, just, hey, this is Dave. Try, try Bob's line for me. You won't burn the lead and you can increase the times that you call and make more contacts simply. So in a way, it is a numbers game, but it's calling more records less times, not calling more records fewer times. Does that make sense? It's it doesn't make sense. So let me draw some parallels here. Tell me if I got this right. So instead of doing 100 calls a day, that's a simple number, you're saying, and so, so 100 calls a day is, is really 100 contacts, 100 you know individuals. You're saying I call 40 individuals a day. And those individuals I'm going to call three times. So on that simple math, that's actually 120 calls in a day I'm making. I'm just calling those individuals three times, theoretically. So I'm calling a smaller number so I have more bandwidth to call them more frequently and increase my likelihood of connecting with them as opposed to going through and calling them once and giving up. And this is what we see over and over again. People who use CRM treat the tool like exactly like what Dave is talking about. I'm just going to call them once and never try it again. That's why we see on average people make two to three call attempts and they give up. And those two, three call attempts are usually spread out over weeks and then they just right. stop. So they have, and that's the issue there overall. The other part you're really saying, and there's a sidebar there where I, I can't remember who it was I was talking to. I think, it, I want to say it was Michael Padone. He told a story where he said when he first started calling, they had phone books in those days. He was given a phone book, his first job, and says, you know, they start dialing. And what he did was he jumped right away to the middle of the phone book, to the M's, because he knew all the new reps started at the A's. So the A, B, C, D, E's, just got harassed nonstop with calls and they all gave up before they ever got to the M's. 
So he started calling with the M's and he just did the same thing, right? And he 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 would do, I'm gonna do M, N, O, and P today, and that's it. I'm making that up. You get the idea. Um, and that had much more success for him. It's it's also to the point you're talking about the voicemail thing was really interesting. You know, part of what David's somewhat getting to here, which is really interesting because I didn't know where he was going to go with this conversation. I'm listening to this for the first time too, guys. And you're really getting into the idea of a cadence, which is the idea that I want to hit you over and over and over and over and over again. Maybe it's, you know, the cliche is seven touches in seven days. But, you know, for many of our in our accounts, our clients of Vanilla Soft, they're doing exactly what you just said, David. They're hitting them two and three times in one day. And then maybe they'll give them a, a break for a day. And then they'll do it again for three more times second in the third day. And then give them a break for two days. And they'll hit them again three more times in that, you know, that the next next time. And they're mixing it up. So sometimes in the phone, they're leaving a voicemail, but the next time they're ghosting. In other words, they I can see the number came up on my call display, but there was no voicemail left. So it's enough as a trigger to say, yeah, I was out of my office, but I recognize that number. But because it's spread out, I understand the rep is just chasing me. He's not stalking me, which is a great point that Dave was making. If you do it over and over and over again, Daryl, you wouldn't like that, would I? No, I wouldn't like that. You know why? Because you're freaking stalking me. Stop stalking me. So I really like what you're saying there. And the other part there is different channels that like you can call, you can email, you can social, you can refer. All of those are great vehicles. You can text to do it. And that's huge. So in your example, to recap your point of it's not a numbers game, it's really saying you don't call 100 contacts. You actually call a hell of a lot less, just call them more often and across multiple channels. Is that the, 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 the long and short of it? More. Which seems... Say that again. You have two different... So you could hit this one and then that one, and then and you're going to go back and forth throughout the week and hit both different groups. But it's you, you've got it right. You've got the principle right. I but, really like that point you're making there. It's two different groups, right? So let's say in my case, Vanilla Soft, I may target a head of sales and I may target a head of marketing. Well, to David's point, the first couple of days, I'm going to hit the head of sales. And then, and then I'm going to give them a, ra a, bra a break while I'm hitting the head of marketing. And then I'm going to give them a break when I'm about to head of sales. So the idea of different personas, different buyers in your cycle is brilliant. It's totally brilliant. And you should know this, folks. Who are the people who either buy or influence or champion your purchase? That's how you break it up into different buckets. One that I worked at, of that goes training. We did all this work. This is another little tip that I'll just throw in, right? I train them on everything for a solid week. And then I put them on the phone and it was crickets for five hours because they were calling the leads that they had bought from the provider that they said were qualified, double verified, but it was wrong number, bad number, guys not there anymore, companies closed down. So just a just a tidbit if we had seemed like we had time is you you will be you will fail even at the numbers game or if you're not doing the numbers game, you'll still fail if you haven't if you don't have a very qualified list. That's a you want to have a very qualified list, you want to pay somebody not the salespeople. You want to pay somebody else, an administrator, somebody else. The salespeople's time is precious. Do not put a salesman to spend hours getting wrong numbers. Have somebody else do that. Division of labor is what I call it. We forgot that principle. But uh, have them do it. Then you put a qualified, real verified list where you know the name of the contacts. That's key because then you can use that one name thing I talked about. I'm calling for Bob because you know the owner or the CFO or whoever, you know Bob is the guy, he's there, still there, it's verified. And that's and you use the, the use this counterintuitive, it's not a numbers game principle, and you can dramatically increase your contacts. So this is such a this is a whole different podcast here, but we I agree with everything he just said. For example, at Vanilla Soft, you know, we use Zoom Info. You can use anybody you want to. So when a lead comes in, whether it is a, a list that we've pulled because this is our target audience, or it's an inbound lead, they fill out a form. They all go through Zoom Info, and those who get cleansed by Zoom Info then get flipped over to sales. Those who can, Zoom Info cannot cleanse, we flip over to a human being who physically tries to research them on LinkedIn, websites, whatever. And, and then if they can clean them, that human being puts them over to the sales rep. And when the sales rep calls them, if they mark them as, no, Bob isn't here anymore, it gets rejected and it goes back to the human being to say, who is Bob's replacement? And so we've actually got warm bodies combined with technology, making sure the data is clean so that my very expensive sales talent is not doing that. We're out of time here, folks. Go buy Brilliant. the book, The Million Dollar Rebuttal. David Walter, David, what's the best way to reach you? 
uh, LinkedIn. Of course, I'm giving a book away, a physical book to everybody anyone who wants it at getbookoffer.com. So if you go there, you, it's a ship and handling, but you get all kinds of videos and training and stuff for free uh, when you do that. So you can go to Amazon and buy it. I've got the audio book, the ebook. Uh, I've got it all and uh, the print book. Or you can go to getbookoffer.com and uh, get connected with me. And then I, I have all these extra stuff that you get. Cold calling is not a numbers game, my friends. It's all about the pursuit of happiness. This is my good friend, David Walter. He is the best-selling author of The Million Dollar Rebuttal. I am Daryl Prell. I am not a best-selling author. I suck. But this, my friends, is the Inside Inside Sales Show. We will talk to you next week where we do it all again. In the meantime, have a good one. We'll talk to you soon.